Praise the Lord and welcome to weekly message here at WGM Church. Today's date is May 9th, 2021. I'm glad you can join us here again today. Let's all begin with meditation of the week from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The main text today comes from Psalm 33, verse 1 through 11. Psalm 33, verses 1 through 11. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today. May the Holy Ghost anoint each and every listener of today's message, receive wisdom and understanding of the truth. And may they all, may we all, listen and keep your words in our hearts. May you also bless and sanctify them abundantly as they meditate in your words. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The text tells us to rejoice in the Lord toward the righteous who are justified under the law, as well as justified through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is asking them to sing with harp, psaltery, and ten string instruments. Also in the Lord, asking to sing to him with a new song 
and play skillfully with a loud noise. A new song is a song that can only come from a new heart, and a song that cannot be recorded by man, and must be sung loudly and elaborately. The Bible speaks of those who sing a new song, emerging into the great tribulation in the future. First, there are four beasts and twenty-four elders around the throne of God in heaven, as recorded in Revelation chapter five. Verse nine and ten, and they sung a new song, saying, "Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth." These twenty-four elders speak of the Old Testament saints as well as the New Testament saints who were saved and raptured through the blood of Christ to reign with them in the kingdom of Christ. Second, the hundred forty-four thousand Jewish virgins who are marked with seals during the Great Tribulation. In Revelation chapter fourteen, verses one through three, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. Even nowadays, the children of God who are redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can rejoice by singing new songs that the world never knows. In addition, the remnant of the Jews who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ during the Great Tribulation shall also sing new songs. The new song is to spring out of the hearts of those whose souls are saved and purified by the blood of Christ. So it is a new song. That is elaborately sung, with a loud voice, as if a river of living water is flowing out. Therefore, it is a song that even a famous music composer dares not to create, as well as any famous singer dares to sing either. It is a spiritual song that only the righteous, who are redeemed by the blood of Christ, can sing. Also, the righteous know the new songs and sing new songs through the power of the word of the Lord, who is in them, who made the heaven and earth, and countless hosts in the heavens by His breath. He gathered the waters of the sea as a heap. It is because they know that He is the God who saved the Israelites from the Red Sea by stacking. The waters together, stacking them together, and that he was the God who judged by putting the water in the depths above the heavens in the storehouse of heaven, and making the depths burst during the time of Noah, thus causing the flood, reaching above all the mountains in the earth. God spoke through the prophet Isaiah; he would do new things in the future. When God does new things. All the righteous in the Lord will sing a new song together. Isaiah forty-three verses nineteen through twenty-one. He said, "Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall we not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons, and the owls." Because I give waters in the wilderness, 
and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself, for they shall show forth my praise. God also spoke of the reasons why the saints living in the world of sin and suffering should rejoice in the Lord. In Psalm 33, as we read earlier, verse 10 and 11, The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. After Satan, the devil, illegally brought sin into the world and usurped Eden, the garden of God, and the whole earth, he used all his principalities and powers under his command, as well as the rulers of the darkness of this world and the evil spirits in the high places. Gentile nations have devised a scheme to eliminate all the Israelites that God has chosen as well as the Christians who are the children of God. They have been constantly committing themselves to various conspiracies for the past 6,000 years. In particular, History proves all the schemes that the Gentile nations who carried out these satanic plots during the last 2,000 years. Countless empires that had appeared in the history of the world, such as Babylon, Assyria, Egypt, Medes, Persia, Greece, the Roman Empire, German Nazis, and all schemes of annihilation of Jews and Christians by Roman Catholic Church prove all of this. And they still oppress against Israel through United Nations. The Six Day War in 1967, which was a joint attack against Israel by the Alliance of the Arabic Nations, it was to wipe out Israel from the earth. But God thwarted their schemes. Nevertheless, countries like Iran, united with Syria, is still secretly creating nuclear weapons to get rid of Israel. Many nations, including the United States, are advocating so-called free democracy and free market economy, are divided into right-wing and left-wing, even making God's people think that right-wing democracy is what God approves, thereby deluding them. But in fact, not only socialism, communism, but even democracy is not right in God's sight. For all political systems in the world make a play card saying, man first, instead of God first. What is right in God's sight is God first, as the government of God, by God, and for God. Abraham Lincoln has been respected by the people around the world because he addressed the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Lincoln pleased the people, but he failed to please God. Now the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord. In the world still ruled by Satan, the devil, there is no joy in God's people. Although God's children are suffering in the present world, God will soon judge the world of sin and frustrate all the tricks of the deceitful heathen nations, making them all null and void, and that only the plan of the Lord God will stand forever. This is the reason why God's people have to hold on to the hope of coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must realize God's will to rejoice in the Lord looking forward to the day when God's will is fulfilled on the earth by God as was done in heaven, casting out the devil from the earth into the lake of fire. 
Apostle Paul, who was deeply aware of this, said to the members of the Philippian church during his imprisonment. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then, same chapter, verse 12 and 13. I know how I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he said that they were no longer of this world. John 15 verse 19 If we were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Now, Jesus also prayed to Father God in chapter 17. In the uh, Gospel of John, John chapter 17. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Those are the brothers and sisters in Christ. So he doesn't pray for the world. He prays for us. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I said that again in verse 16. Apostle Paul, who believed in Christ and was chosen as a servant of God in the Holy Spirit, also testified that Christians are no longer in the world. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working there whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Before we close out today's message, I would like to ask you one last question. Have you been saved? Do you have Jesus Christ in you? Have you received the Holy Ghost? You know, it's just like modern day sports. It's your team versus theirs. Home versus away. It's just like that here in the spiritual sense. You're either with God or you're not. You either have Jesus Christ in you or you don't. So if you're not with him, you're simply against him. Getting saved is easy as ABC. A. Admit that you're a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is in Romans 3, verse 23. Everybody is a sinner. And then B. Believe the gospel. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, according to 1 Corinthians 15, the first four verses. How Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And in our dis dispensation, this is the dispensation, the age of grace. Church H, and we receive salvation only through faith, not of our works, 
We can't add to what Jesus did for us. So according to Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So if it was based on what you did to receive salvation and not go to hell, then you're just taking Jesus' work out of the picture. You're simply stating that you're more righteous than Jesus. You're adding on to what he did. That's not how we get saved these days. It is strictly only by faith, according to 1 Corinthians 15. And then C, confess your sin. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins for not believing in Jesus Christ and his blood atonement, he is faithful and just to give, forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, tomorrow is not a guarantee for anybody, let alone next 15, 20 minutes, next hour. Do you know what, what's going to happen after your lunch break at work? Nobody knows that. The day of salvation is now and today. I sincerely hope you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today. God bless and may the peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.